In this video we're going to look at how charge correction can be performed based on one column of VAMAS blocks that have a, a well-defined binding energy and how this correction can be applied to each row within a file. This is intended to correct for charge compensation that is not identical for each one of these measurements and the reason the charge compensation is different between these measurements is that the sample surface is evolving chemically as a consequence of exposing the surface to UV radiation. Charge correction is often performed using the Carbon-1S. However, we have quite a, an involved structure here and if we were to work out the peak position based on a peak model, we would have to have a lot of confidence in the way we've constructed the peak model to ensure that we've got a calibration peak in the right place. However, in this case, we have the Chlorine-2P which is believed to remain fairly constant across the entire set of measurements in terms of binding energy. So what we'll do is we'll construct a peak model for these chlorine 2p doublet peaks and we will shift this entire set of chlorine peaks so they all align and at the same time we'll shift all of these other spectra corresponding to each row of chlorine peaks in this data file. So the compensation will be calculated based on the chlorine and then applied to a row and this process will be repeated for all of these chlorine peaks so the whole file will then be corrected to compensate for any shifts in peaks due to the charge state of the sample. The processing option that we're going to use to calibrate these data is on the calibration property page of the spectrum processing dialog window and it's the apply by row first component. So what we must do is create a peak model for one of these data. So we'll use the quantification parameters dialog window and the first property page is the regions property page and this allows us to define a background. So we'll define a background and just make a, a minor adjustment to the limits. So we have a background and we wish to place two peaks. So we'll just adjust the width using the mouse and then define the next peak and say fit. And you can see now we get a reasonable fit to the data if we look at the residual. This is close to what you'd expect for Poisson statistics. Somewhere below one would be the target. This is because we have a multiple detector system here and hence we don't get the expected unity for Poisson statistics. But nevertheless, this is quite close. The ratio of the peaks we'd expect to be 2 to 1, so the peak model as it stands has not produced the expected ratio. But that may not be an issue, provided these represent the shape that we actually see in these data. And that's what we need. We need to be able to identify a peak maximum for one of these components that can be consistently calculated for all of these data. Ideally, we would have the best peak model possible for this exercise. We would like to establish this position in terms of the binding energy so expecting the ratio of these peaks to be closer to the 2 to 1 ratio that is expected for a doublet with P symmetry then we can try and adjust this model to, to improve this position so let's see this peak here you can see there's a, a tail here that is not fitting the data too well corresponding to this in, hump in the residual so what I'll do is I'll introduce some asymmetry so I'm going to type in comma 2 and I'll put equal so it transfers to the other component as well in column B and then we'll say fit and we end up with a much improved residual so this is closer to what we might expect for these type of data and the ratio has improved so let's now introduce a constraint and I'm typing A this is referring to the A in column A and when I press return it will calculate the area of column B relative to column A so it believes it's more than half so let's just make that 0 0.51 and you can see the residual then is damaged by introducing this constraint but when we say fit well it goes back to being a reasonable residual so as far as fitting these data so we get a consistent answer for the peak position of this peak here then this constraint is working well 
we've got a good representation of the data and we can go and fix these other constraints of forward half maximum and position so we really have quite a, a rigid model that's based on this one spectrum and then if I select the other chlorine 2p data and I say propagate and I propagate regions components and I auto fit then we should find that we have a fit on each one of these spectra. So I've overlaid the chlorine 2p data and you can see that the peak model is indicating we do have shifts and these have all been fitted using this constrained peak model. So to calibrate the full file what we need to do is bring up the spectrum processing dialog window and on the calibration property page we need to enter a true value and this will be 198 EV and this corresponds to the binding energy that we expect for the chlorine 2p 3 halves peak and we'll tick the region and components tick boxes so these will be shifted when we perform the calibration and we've got a column selected of the chlorine 2p so that we can now say apply by row first component so the first component corresponds to the one that we have in the first column in column A of the components property page and when I press this button then the measured value will be calculated from this peak position that has been fitted to these data and then the offset will be applied to the row and this will be performed each time for each one of these spectra in the rows of this data file so I'll now perform that operation and you can see the outcome is that the chlorine peaks all now align in binding energy and you can see there's an offset here that has been calculated and reported on the calibration property page for this particular spectrum and you can now step across and see that the same offset applies to each one of these and when I step down you can see that the offset changes and it depends on the calculation for the corresponding chlorine 2p spectrum and setting the energy for this chlorine 2p to have a value of 198.